How you doing tonight? This is Brooklyn Dave. And tonight we're going to be studying one of the greatest romance games, or one of the most famous in history, the Evergreen Game. And what could be better than studying the Evergreen Game on Evergreen Chess? We should have done it long before. And I'm going to be doing a series. Uh, I'm not sure which video this will be in the series or which ones will go before it, but um, I'll be analyzing some of the great swashbuckling romance games of yesteryear leading up to today. And so this game took place in 1852. It's been analyzed by some of the greatest masters for 170 years. It's a flawed game. It's not up to a Magnus Carlsen game of today, but it's exciting and it's fun. And Adolf Anderson, who's playing white, is one of the great players of that time era. He was a contemporary of Morphy. His opponent, Jean Dufresne, the Frenchman, uh, he was also a very strong player. The ratings then were not the same as today. We don't know what he was rated, but he was a master of that day. And even though those masters maybe are not as strong as the masters of today, the masters today have all those games and all that theory going all the way back to hundreds of years to build their repertoire from and to learn from these players' mistakes. But this is one of the exciting games and one of my favorite games. Uh, and It will be obvious why as we get into it. So uh, let's just get into it right away. We're going to get into the Evergreen game on Evergreen Chess. And the game starts with E4. I could say, of course, because almost everything started with E4 in those days. Uh, that was by far the most popular opening, almost the only opening. And White is planting a pit. You know, this is basic uh, strategy. He plants a pawn in the center, takes up a square in the center, attacks another square in the center here, right? This is called a strong point defense, very common then, symmetrical, also takes up a square in the center and uh, lays his claim in the center. And White attacks that pawn, Black defends that pawn, very basic. We got a million openings that come out of this. We got the Roy Lopez, made famous by Fisher, among others. We've got the Scotch Gambit, or the Scotch Game, which is still popular. We've got all kinds of different attacks, but this is Anderson. And uh, still everything's pretty much normal. Bishop C4 was often played. It's called the Italian game of the bishop's opening. And it's matching it. And that's, this is just an Italian game or bishop's opening of, of up to this point. But then we got this. We got B4. The Evans Gambit. One of the great swashbuckling uh, attacking openings. Uh, where white is getting black by by giving him pawns. He gets black to move the same piece twice to take the pawn, and he white gets a lead development. And with perfect play, black probably can defend. It's probably not sound, but uh, in those days, they didn't care about that. And again, you have to defend very well, or else bad things can happen to black. But anyway, black takes the first pawn. Bishop takes c4, uh, b4, sorry. Then we got c3 hitting the bishop. Now he can go here, in which case d5, d4 would come. Or he could go here, which is probably better. And guess what? Even though that happens, uh, d4 comes anyway. <laughs> so here comes d4, which doesn't seem to make sense, right? There's black and take, and this pip, this pawn is pinned. He can't take back with it. So he's basically can win another pawn here, right? And that's what happens. Black does take. He takes d4. And this is what I've been saying. So this is one of the things that co coincide with the lessons that I've been teaching on attack, secrets of attack. And I haven't, if you haven't seen any of those, you might want to go back and watch those and then come back here because you're going to see some of my principles, not my principles, the principles of attack, which I talk about in those videos. You're going to see a lot of them. And this game might make a lot more sense if you have that background. But if you already have that background or if you just want to continue to watch the game, that's fine too. So, white castles here. And what I often tell people is castling is often the most aggressive move. So it's not like, oh my God, he's castling, he's running away. No, he's, he's getting his king safe and he's bringing this rook into the game here. And as you'll see, everything, everybody comes to the party, all the pieces. It's not a one-piece attack. The great attackers did not attack prematurely. They set up positions which lead to open positions where attack is possible. 
I guess that's the best way to describe it, right? So anyway, here we are, uh, White Castle, then Black and went into the pawn here, right? Uh, probably not advised, but he plays d3. Okay? Uh, he's trying not to open things up too fast, and then White has to take time to capture his pawn eventually, right? So does White capture it with the bishop or the queen? No. White proceeds with his attack, and now it's starting to look like a lot of variations of the Scotch Gambit, which I play a lot. And as you'll notice, we're attacking here. This And f7 is often a weak point in these king, king Bong games. And if black doesn't castle early and defend, it gets you get attacked. f7 is only protected by the king. So that's why it makes that a good uh, place to attack. Okay, so queen b3, queen f6. We got this is this, You can defend it this way too, but this is more active. It's probably a better move. So far, so good, but look at this. e5 right now. Is that sacking another pawn? Not really. Is if knight takes knight and knight takes knight. And queen, if knight takes knight, I can pin the knight. Right? So he'll just be winning a pawn and then take the knight and then take here. You have to look through the different things. I'm not going to move all the pieces on the board to show you these variations. But you can stop the video at any time and see what happens in different circumstances. Right? All right. So he plays e5. Again, in order to take this, you can't take with the queen, obviously. If you, if you take with the queen here, uh, he's going to pin the queen, right? If he takes with the knight, and knight takes knight, and queen takes knight, then here comes bishop takes here, right? So I'm showing you that, right? I played e5, white played e5. I always say I. Like, why am I white? That's Anderson, that's why. I always identify with the attacker. All right. So if knight takes knight, if knight takes pawn, and then white plays knight takes knight, and then black plays queen takes knight, I won't be able to pin, uh, Anderson won't, that is, be able to pin the queen because nothing's holding it. He would just take it and it would be mate because that knight's gone, remember. But white would be able to take here if the queen would be diverted and it would get, the king would have to move, and now the king's trapped in the middle of the board for sure. Uh, it's probably playable to take. I don't think it's a very good move to take. So he doesn't take. He plays queen g6. This is very much, I think we've transposed into a scotch gambit. That's what this looks like. So I've seen this position in the scotch a million times. So anyway, rookie one, bringing another piece, developing another piece. Okay? This is developed here, the rook. It's against the king, even though there's a pawn in a way, right? Knight g e7. He's trying, he's, you know, getting ready to castle. And right here, I should mention... That if black plays carefully, black is better here, probably. Black just has to be careful, not get too greedy, consolidate, get his pieces out, nullify white's initiative, and black would be fine. And this move here, knight ge7, is a very good start. He's ready to castle. Everything's copacetic. All right? So, black, white plays here. You got to keep the attack going. He's attacking here. Oops, got better with my arrows. Attacking here, get rid of this arrow. All right, so we're attacking this knight. But white, black can castle right now and allow bishop takes knight. This knight takes back, and black is fine. Uh, that's what he should do, but he does this inexplicable move. And again, this is the days of romance chess. So he's pretty much trying to probably say to... Uh, Anderson, hey, look, I can sack pawns too. Uh, and he, if if he takes, if white takes, then he's going to be get a quick development on the rook here, right? And so on. But it's a mistake. B5 is the first real blunder. And uh, Anderson just takes it with the queen. Queen takes B5. And here we go. Okay, we're developing a piece with the tempo on the queen, right? It's pretty good. And we go queen A4. Okay, again, again, uh, I, th I don't know if black, yeah, black can't castle here. Actually, black can't castle right now, because if black was the castle, we could play bishop takes knight, and after knight takes, we could take this. So right now, we can't, it would be a mistake to castle. So he plays, what does he play? Bishop e6. Makes perfect sense. And now that this bishop is no longer hanged, black is now ready to castle. Just this 
combination of taking here and then taking this bishop over here is no longer there since he moved it there. Okay? So bishop b6 is good. And I've been in this position, I'm telling you, as white in the scotch gambit. Uh, so everything is fine. He played bishop b6. White has to develop more. And now black should just castle. Black should just castle now. And he's okay. He's fine. And he's doing he's doing just wonderfully. But he doesn't. He plays bishop b7. Which is, you know, he's counteracting. He's He wants to attack too. He wants to mix it up and say, I'm going to get there first. This is swashbuckling chess in 1852. And, you know, he's saying, I know how to attack also. So he plays bishop b7. And now already things start happening, okay? After after bishop b7, plays knight e4. He, it might not even, it still might be his last chance to castle right now. He might be able to get away with it still. Uh, this knight is held, of course, by the rook, this knight here. But he, what he's doing is shielding this pawn from the queen so that the bishop can take it. Right. Again, that's why I tell people, you know, being a good attacking player. Notice the great attacker Anderson is castled, and his king is safe, even though there's a, a counterattack hitting him. There's no joke here. He's getting, but Black's king is more unsafe than White's right now. Believe it or not. Okay. Uh, but anyway, you can throw this into the computer. I could be wrong. Uh, it might be. I'm sure that black castling would be the computer move here. I'm not 100% sure, but I bet it is. And then he makes this move. I don't understand this move. Uh, I don't know why he makes this move. But he does. Uh, and he just takes here. And now we have the... Now he's threatening to win the queen. So, so white is threatening to win the queen just by going knight here, check. And that would win the queen. So now black has to move the queen. And maybe he didn't. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I don't know why he did that. But he did. And he goes now. Now he's moving the queen again. To h5. And now things are going to get hairy. Uh, now the fun starts. And this is not necessarily the best move. This is probably the best move. And try to either trap the queen or just... So, in other words, this might be, again, knight moving here. This is probably better. The computer would probably like it better. If the queen goes here, then you can bring the bishop back here, hitting the queen, chase the queen around. That's probably better. But, like I said, these are the swashbuckling days. So he plays knight f6 check. This is a move that Brooklyn Dave might play. <laughs> and obviously has to take, because otherwise the queen's hanging, right? So, uh... This check cannot be allowed. So knight f6 check. We got g takes f6. And we have e takes f6. And now he's going to get his piece back. Mm -hmm. It's pinned. He can play pawn takes. Uh, but look at the attack that black has. I mean, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of pieces aiming at white's king. Uh, so take, just taking back the knight and getting your piece back uh, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that white's winning. Okay, white might be losing here. So we just had e takes f6, and now we have rook g8. Rook g8 right now. And they're sure, this is what I mean, wide open chess. Look at all the empty squares. Look at all the space. And look at both teams attacking each other. And here's my one of my favorite moves of the game. So what do we see right now in this position? We see that white has all his pieces developed. Black has all his pieces developed. But white doesn't have this rook developed. And now most people would just take back this knight in some way. Either with the rook. Well, not with the rook not right now. That would be a mistake. But you could take it back with the pawn, you know. But then he's like, it might be white getting mated. And this is my favorite move of the game. So pause the video now and see if you can guess the move. I kind of gave you a hint. 
but it's a hard move to do. It's a hard move to do because your own the white king is in danger, and you know it seems like something super snazzy is important right now, but it's not. So if you didn't guess, it's getting the last piece into the game. Now both players, white and black, have every piece active right now, right? And I'm not using the analysis board. I have not used an analysis board to analyze this. You can do that. It's a famous game, the Evergreen game. You'll hear grandmasters analyze it. But I'm trying to just get a different take on it, uh, Brooklyn Dave's take, and you know, talking about it in a different way, combining it with some of my teaching videos, Se Secrets of Attack. And I'm showing that you know, lead and development, open games, castling, the only real difference is that White's castled, even though he doesn't look that safe, and Black isn't, okay? So White just played a very strong move, Rook AD1. And you'll notice that he was sacking a piece by doing so. That's what makes this move so beautiful. Did you realize that a piece was hanging, that White had a piece hanging? Which makes this even braver. This Before White made this move, before he did this, he had to calculate all that is to come because this knight is hanging. The pawn's pinned. The queen can take it. So that means Anderson saw all that's coming. Okay? And that's one of the reasons why this is considered such an incredible game. He allows this. Black's threatening mate right now. I mean, what's going on here? And look at all you know all the look the all the pieces coming down at him. Are you kidding me? How could you take time to play Rook A D one? All right, so pause the video now. You, I'm going to tell you to pause the video. Well, if you pause the video before I said this, <laughs> but pause the video after I fin I'll give you a second and look at all the variations to allow this move shows incredible calculation skill and then you have to see how does white win because white has to win now or else white's going to get mated white doesn't have time to screw around now okay so queen takes f3 and this fun begins rook takes e7 check obviously you can't take with the pawn right you got to take with the rook you don't have time to take with the pawn you get mated that's check and he plays knight takes e7 Right, but you got to look at all the. Ver what happens if he doesn't play? Knight takes e7. What happens if he plays here? Well, that's an amazing thing. If he plays there, what happens? What would be the next move? Right. Don't forget, he's threatening mate. Well, if Black plays there, you got to do it in your head. This rook's going to take here, check, and if the king takes. Then this is going to be a double check. This bishop, sorry, goes here, double check. So looking at it, if the king goes here, rook takes check, king takes rook, this bishop double check, where does the king go? You want to see what it looks like? I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. But don't forget, the king's here now. Where does the king go when that check comes? This rook also got exposed, right? So let's walk it through now. All right. Well, first of all, if he goes here, I mean, he's going to die quick, right? He's just going to get massacred quick. The rook's going to, first of all, the rook can come back here and take the queen. Uh, the rook, because it's a discovery check, right? Oops, I'm bad with the arrow. Sorry about that, gang. So he certainly doesn't look like he wants to go there. There's a lot of bad things. But why is this so unsafe, right? Let's look at it. We talked about it. Now let's look at it. He takes here. Check. What would happen? He'd have to take. Check. Right. Now we got double check. Don't forget about this bishop here. Where does he go? He'd have to go where? Here? Here? And then this check. Bishop comes in check. And then this bishop comes in mate. Which is kind of what happens anyway. Okay? But there's another thing that can happen, all right? And that's why it's hard to do this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it and put back the, the video for a second. 
So we were saying what happens if when the king is here and I and he was checked, if instead of taking with the knight, which is what happens in the game, he goes here. And we said that white would take here, check. And if the king takes, this bishop comes here, double check. This bishop's also, don't forget about that guy, right? So where would he go on this double check? He'd have to go here, right? Then this bishop from here would go here, check, held by the rook. And when the king moves, this would come in, mate. You got to see that, right? Do you see it? Hopefully you see it. Okay. So, but what happens if he goes here? What happens if he goes here? Then what do we do? He goes here, check. <laughs> if he takes with the king... You got the same thing, double check here, and the bishops come in and mate, okay? But what happens if he takes with the rook? If the rook takes here, then the pawn takes the queen. And the attack is still going, and we got a queen, right? And if he takes with the knight, which is one of the nicest, takes with the knight, okay? Check this out. This is my favorite continuation. Check. He's got to take it, right? Check. That's double check. See that? So he can't block with the knight. He can't block a double check, right? If he goes here, this white bishop comes in here and mates. But what happens if the king goes here? And this is my favorite mate, and a lot of people's favorite mate. Then this is mate. What do you think of them apples, huh? Okay, so we're going to put it back and go back to the game. Okay, here we are. We're back in the game. Uh, we just played rook takes e7 check. I showed you what happens with all the other crazy variations. Uh, I'm sure Anderson's opponent, Dufresne, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, thought about all this. So he takes here. Okay. We, it, it looks pretty safe. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got to give him back his queen. <laughs> uh, or else this wouldn't work. The queen was here, right? I hope I left the queen on. I didn't take. I put the queen on before for the other variations. Yeah, I think I did. All right. This is back. This is where we are. So we played rook takes, knight takes. What now? Pause the video. Oh, my God. I mean, look, look at the. If if we can't mate him by force now, we're getting mated. White's getting mated. So, what's the move? I bet you know. If you went this car, you got far. He had to see all this. That's what's so crazy. Yes, he has to take. Queen check. Anything that's not check, it's all over. Because we're running out of pieces. Queen check. Okay. Now, if the king goes here. The queen's just going to take this knight, and that's it. Game over. Mate. Right? Uh, so he can't do that. So he takes the queen. And here's the beauty of it. Double check. Notice how he's got nothing left. Except two bishops and a rook. Double check. Okay. Uh, if the king goes here, we've got this same mate. This is mate here. Right? If the king goes here. This is mate. Look at it. Don't forget about this bishop. Okay. So, king doesn't go there. King can't go here. Can't sit here. So, he goes here. We're running out of moves. And then we have it. We have it then. We have it. Checky poo. It doesn't matter where he goes. He goes... King F8, and this is mate. This pawn is mate at him. So let's look at what's left. Anderson uh, has two bishops and a rook. Dufresne has two bishops, a rook, another rook, and a queen. This is the final position. This is the end of the road. So. Uh, 
What did you think of all them apples? I found it super instructive. You can play over the game. You can do it with, you know, with an analysis. You can do it with stockfish. But part of it is learning how to analyze and to visualize. And I hope they did this video well as I was stopping and pausing it. If I forgot to pause it or put a piece back on, that would be a disaster. But I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like the video, click the like button. Like the video if you like the video. Uh, I won't tell if you ring that bell and you click the bell for notifications. And we're asking people to join. We're starting an online club for different memberships, $10 a month, $20 a month. And there will be different goodies. And I'll be doing another video talking about it. But if you want to support the channel, you know, we're trying to get to the break-even point and beyond. Um, I've caught a lot of flack over uh, the, the fact that I the channel was started so that we could help out and play the players. We've never made any money yet. Um, I don't want to beg, so I'm not going to beg. You know what to do. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe. And if you want to join the channel, um, become a patron, join our Patreon. Uh, hopefully by the time this video is posted, we'll have that up. See, I don't know when the videos are going up. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, don't get daved or Anderson. Take care now.